Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here, back with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, October the 4th, 2024. In this video, we are concerned about the Gulf of Mexico as we could be seeing our next tropical storm or hurricane developing in the Gulf headed towards Florida over the next 7 to 10 days perhaps. So to start things off, here's a look at the GOES-16 RGB satellite imagery provided by CyclonicWX.com. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to this website with a great interface of satellite images 100% for free, so be sure to check out the website. And so what we have going on right now out there in the Atlantic Basin is, of course, Major Hurricane Kirk, which got close of Category 5 hurricane intensity last night with 145 mile an hour winds. That system is weakening due to an eyewall replacement cycle with 130 mile an hour winds as of the latest advisory. We have a soon to become Hurricane Leslie really starting to become much better defined as this too generally heads off towards the west northwest. And then another system coming off of Africa in the next two to four days, which could also have some chances of tropical development. But in this video, mainly, we're going to be focusing on the Gulf of Mexico because there is some concerns now that could raise a huge red flag on our disturbance in the western Gulf that could develop into our next powerful tropical storm or if not maybe even a hurricane now when we zoom in here on the gulf of mexico here you can see the purple outline showing us where the land masses are so we have texas over here we have louisiana here we have mississippi alabama we have florida right in here we have cuba we have the yucatan peninsula and then here is the western gulf of mexico and eastern mexico coast right here so very well easy to see here based on the interface from cyclonic wx and now what we have going on here is this area of disturbed weather you could see winds rotating around like this so we do have a circulation that is trying to get established here and we do have some percolating deep convection here which helps to precondition the atmosphere for further development and we're gonna have to see on how this all evolves over the next two to three days because if this does evolve pretty quickly and this area of disturbed weather heads this general direction towards the west florida coast say such as tampa bay over here you have cape coral over here you have lake okeechobee you have orlando florida somewhere in here this could be a pretty significant rainmaker and flood potential storm headed for the florida coast in the next seven to ten days now before we do return and talk about the system in the gulf of mexico i just wanted to show you all the players on the field here on our seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the national hurricane center and of course there is that 50 percent chance of tropical development based on what i'm about to show you i would not be surprised if the nhc actually ups this to 60 or even 70 percent chance in their next outlook for the 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time frame. Yesterday, I called this to become a 40%, and it did yesterday after my video released yesterday. This could end up becoming our next system with a 50 to 70% chance, perhaps, in the next seven days. So it's going to be the system to really, really watch. Really watch, because that's closest to land areas. Kirk, 130 mile an hour winds. This is out to sea, and you can see it right here not going to bother anyone however though this could get close to say germany as well as the uk region with tropical or this would be more of a remnant low but more exotropical or subtropical in nature with frontal boundaries but could bring in some pretty big impacts over that area and that i can't believe that's actually going to head in towards their direction so yeah this could be technically a non-fish storm if it could survive and hit the uk land or germany areas okay so 130 there leslie 70 mile an hour tropical storm this is close to becoming our next hurricane you can can't believe it october really rough out there and then of course we have our next system which has a 20 percent chance of tropical development coming off of africa so 
Yeah, lots to watch out there in the deep tropics. But I also wanted to make it clear in this video that this system is no threat to any land areas similar to Hurricane Kirk as this moves out to sea to the northwest. So we will not be spending any time on Kirk or Leslie in this video. Instead, we really do have to watch the Gulf of Mexico very closely because yes, we all as viewers, including you all living in Florida, Georgia, the Carolina coast, could get impacted by some pretty intense rainfall and some significant, potentially life-threatening flooding out of this system. So let's break down all those details in this video showing you all this disturbance. So looking at the European model, this is the 12Z output from the complete run of the European. And as we go forward, you can see right here, the system really consolidates in a hurry. And this is the concern here. If we look at previous runs, uh, from the zero Z run from last night, you can see how much weaker it was. And then the run before that, it was even weaker. And then the run even before that, literally almost two days ago, run showing a much weaker system. So the fact that this has uptrended in recent model runs really is concerning because that means if this does continue to uptrend, we could have another hurricane on our hands. Maybe, maybe some of the members from the Euro are even suggesting another major hurricane in the Gulf. I don't want to go that far, but I will show you evidence and proof of that in this video. Okay, so going forward here, we can see how the system really consolidates. Now, there is some north or some southwesterly wind shear cutting across the system that could at least put a ceiling on this, but it doesn't surprise me if that inner core structure tries to wrap on the up shear side. If it tries its hardest, this thing could really go bonkers. It could theoretically, because it's going to be moving over some very, very high upper ocean heat content waters and very high amounts of sea surface temperatures. Okay, this is four days out for Tuesday, and we have, again, a 987 millibar system, and this continues to move generally northeastward towards the Florida coast of, say, Tampa Bay with a 980 millibar system. To be specific, this gets down to about 980 to 960. 76 millibars that's pretty low that is a category one hurricane on the european model and look at how heavy that rainfall could be so this would make landfall on this particular model by the middle of next week so by wednesday maybe even into thursday there's a lot to be worked out here in the next five to six days on exactly where and when this will be making landfall but we're thinking right now somewhere in the florida coast right over here i've boxed you all in there in black showing us our potential area of landfall and eventually getting close to the carolina coast bringing some heavy rainfall there and again some trends to the north some trends to the south are going to be expected at this given time as this moves off the coast of florida though it remains pretty strong and you can see it goes all the way across florida there doesn't weaken very much and then moves offshore even the gfs has uptrended on this disturbance in the western gulf of mexico so here's a look at it here the 12z run from the gfs the global forecasting system and as we go forward it shows again that system really consolidating in a hurry so in about four days here we could be looking at a tropical storm with winds 40 to 60 miles an hour and then again maybe maybe a high-end tropical storm or a low-grade hurricane impacting tampa bay florida by wednesday morning so we're thinking wednesday morning here on october the 9th so that's in about four to six days from now we could see a pretty big landfall with very heavy rainfall, some significant flooding with rainfall amounts that could be uh, that could be life threatening with the amount of rain, and of course some strong gusty tropical storm force winds, maybe even subtropical like with this system as this moves off the Florida coast and then really weakens there with time. So now we have another model that I don't really like using in these videos. It is a very bullish model, but this is the Navy model, the NAVGEM, the naval model, all right, what military uses. And so as we go into time here, the system consolidates, but look how quickly it really does that. 974 millibars so this would be a hurricane and then look at it, it continues to consolidate and becomes maybe a category two 
or even a low-end major hurricane with 110, 115 mile an hour winds potentially. And look at where it's going to be impacting. Again, the Tampa Bay, Florida area, some heavy rainfall, some significant storm surge here. And look, it gets close to the Carolina coast, like South Carolina, North Carolina here could get quite a bit of heavy rainfall and some flooding. And look at that. That thing is a beast of a system. This would be making landfall, by the way, again by early Wednesday morning into the early afternoon hours of Wednesday, October the 9th. So we know a time frame here. It looks to be very late Tuesday into Wednesday afternoon, we're thinking, is when a landfall would happen somewhere along the Florida coast. So now the question really remains, what are the European ensemble members doing about this tropical disturbance brewing in the western Gulf of Mexico? So looking at the next couple of days here, this is where most of the ensemble members show that the system is going to be. We're looking at a low-end tropical depression. Again, if it consolidates fully and we get organized deep convection around the center, this could become an, our next tropical depression fairly soon. And then look what happens as we go forward in time. In about 84 hours, the majority of the models do indicate that this will become a strong tropical storm in about 84 hours out from now so this would be on the 8th of october well actually the 7th of october monday afternoon we have a system that develops here in the gulf and then look what happens by day four by tuesday morning see these orange little spaghetti -o plots here this is showing us a hurricane on some of the members with pressures down to 960, 979 millibars. So there's, uh, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine members, maybe even 10 members showing a hurricane here in four days. Now this could trend down, this could trend up still, but based on the latest trends, it's only getting worse, unfortunately. And look at this. This gets even more concerning as this gets close to Florida. Look at all of these members here showing a Category 1 hurricane or greater. There are some members here that show a Category 4 or even in extreme cases. There's one member right in here. You can see that I circled it in. Only one member out of all of these showing a Cat 5 hurricane in the Gulf, which I disagree with, so that's not going to happen. But what we do have is the majority of our members here showing a Category 1 or 2 hurricane headed for the Florida coast. Like, again, we have Tampa Bay over here. We have um, Cape Coral, Florida. The big bend of Florida, like near Cedar Key, could get impacted by this. There are some uh, trends to the north here. The system goes further to the north as this forms in the Gulf of Mexico, and then this moves offshore. And right now, the time frame is, again, between Tuesday night all the way. Again, you can see it here. All the way into Wednesday night is the time frame that this makes landfall. So in about five to six days um, is a margin of error here. And this could make landfall somewhere along the Florida coast as a strong tropical storm or hurricane. Even the European ensemble member-wise minimum central pressure is going ballistic on this system. Look at how many members show this becoming a major hurricane. Again, this is different from the spaghetti -o plot that I showed you. So you can see um, the majority of the members show development over here. That's that green area showing tropical depression force winds. And then the, the brighter green colors indicate uh, even lower pressure and potentially for a tropical storm. But take note of this. Watch what happens. Some of these members bring this to hurricane intensity in a little over four days. One member specifically wants this making landfall by Tuesday morning. That's why I think between Tuesday afternoon all the way into maybe even Wednesday night, we see maybe a landfall here. And look at, uh, this just gets even more concerning. Look at all of the members here. I mean, this is in the dark blue. That is down to say 968 millibars and lower, down to as low, you can see a 947 here. That's major hurricane, that's category three intensity there. And there's one member even lower than that, down to, say, 939 millibars. So that, that's concerning, and th this is why we really do have to watch this very carefully. Does this become our next tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf? It seems probably more likely than not that we're going to have our next name to keep an eye on 
for in the Gulf of Mexico in the next five days. Now the biggest concern about this tropical disturbance that forms up in the Gulf of Mexico will be the amount of rainfall that it generates, especially across central and southern Florida, according to the weather prediction system model, showing us there's going to be more than four to six inches of rainfall. Look at this, even down here near Cape Coral, Florida, up to maybe 10 and a half inches of rainfall that is pretty significant when you think about it even if this doesn't develop there is going to be some big time flooding big time uh maybe some storm surge flooding along the coast here and this is just this is bad news coming to the florida coast eventually in about seven days looking at the national blend model this is a super blend showing even a more concerning scenario here unfolding for much of the central and southern Florida coast, showing us potentially five to eight inches of rainfall with up to a foot of rainfall potentially over Tampa Bay, Florida and southward, maybe even a foot of rainfall near Delray Beach, Miami, Florida. This is more of a southern Florida threat, not so much up here, which is good news, fortunately, because boy, I'm telling you right now, a lot of repairs, a lot of damage has been done from Hurricane uh, uh, Hurricane Helene that happened nearly a little over a week ago. So this is good news that people are able to dry out here and get pre uh, repair uh, re get repairs done as quickly as possible because you never know what could be on the doorstep for next year, perhaps. Right. But unfortunately, for areas down here to the south, it is looking very, very bad. Lots of heavy rainfall, flooding, and strong winds. Even on the European Ensemble forecast, showing us way too much rainfall and flood concerns. Still maybe even in a couple of inches there over the Big Bend, but the majority, again, looks to be down here in Central Florida. Now, another thing to add more concerns with our tropical system that develops in the Gulf of Mexico is, again, how warm these sea surface temperatures are along the, its path. After Hurricane Helene that went through, there has been no cold water upwelling, unfortunately. So this is going to be working with even more warmer water than before Helene. Look at some of these red colors indicating sea surface temperatures in around 30 degrees Celsius. Look at this. Even up along the coast here of Florida, we have 30 degrees Celsius of waters. That is 87 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. That is bad news for this system. Um, not good because it's going to be moving over the extreme sea surface temperature content in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see water temperatures here up to 2 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. Not good at all for this disturbance. And looking at the upper ocean heat content really quickly, you can see a lot of upper ocean heat energy to work with. As again, the system is over here, it is going to go this way towards the Florida coast, and it's going to be moving over this belt of very warm sea surface temperature, water, and upper ocean heat content. And look at some of these values, still 200 units plus, which is exceptionally high upper ocean heat content. And it could spend a day over that. And looking at the anomaly here, it's just not good. Not good at all. And I'm really concerned about this system that this could have a ceiling, like I said, potentially for a strong tropical storm or even a big hurricane. But anyways, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful and detailed, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. So I mean it, folks. Hit the red subscribe button down below this video. Hit the bell notification for latest updates on the severe weather, winter weather, as well as in the tropics because I do this all day long, every day, as much as I can, as long as there's something to track, such as Kirk, Leslie, and our disturbance in the Gulf. And also, make sure you leave a comment in the section below. I want your thoughts on how you like these videos, what you want me to do to improve my content. But otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow in the tropics.